Well, then let's switch to let's switch to uh, memories there because you do have like that's, I think it's the last chapter of the book that actually talks about memories that there are Confederate statues in California. <laughs> Yeah, there are a lot of Confederate, or were a lot of Confederate statues in California. California had more uh, Confederate memorials and place names than any other free state in the Union, um, well over a dozen. Um, that, that changed um, beginning with, or in the wake of the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, and then uh, through the murder of George Floyd, a lot of those monuments and a lot of those place names came down or were renamed. Um, but it was a it was a part of California's cultural and historical landscape for you know decades, and there wasn't a whole lot of, of attention on it. They just sort of sat there. Well, it's sort of the interesting part because I I looked through your publication list on Durham's website, and you you contributed quite a few pieces on monuments um, to the California newspapers, and um, it it seemed like because I mean. New Orleans, Charleston, Charlottesville, Richmond, they're, they're all over the press, but it seemed like California's monument removal was, was flying pretty much under the radar. It didn't seem like it created, at least nationally, a lot of controversial um, coverage. Yeah, yeah, that's probably right, Niels. It was sort of a, a blip on the radar. Um, actually, one of my articles for the LA Times resulted in the removal of what was the oldest Confederate monument in the, in the far west, um, a memorial in Hollywood Forever Cemetery that, was, that had been there since the mid 1920s. Um, and when I wrote the piece, this was before, it was actually before a lot of the controversy about Confederate monuments and I, I didn't make any appeal to remove it. I made an appeal to just be aware of the fact that mm -hmm. this thing was there and that it has sort of an ugly backstory to it. Um, right. But um, but it, it got caught up in the wave of removals starting in 2017. Yeah. Well, on the other hand, I suppose that what is it, General Lee, as a sequoia tree, I, I suppose the National Park Service is not going to make there a change there. Yeah, I think the National Park Service took down all signage to the Robert E. Lee uh, oh, okay. redwood trees, um, but I think to actually rename those trees, it takes an act of Congress. Yeah, that's um, not gonna I, happen. I, I, yeah, I don't see Congress getting around to that anytime soon. Well, but in in part, it's uh, it's still a con ongoing conversation, though, because um, why well, was it like? four weeks, five weeks ago, San Francisco got into the news over schools that are still named after yeah. Confederates. And it seemed like, I didn't pay close attention to it, but it seemed like they bungled that pretty badly. Yeah, yeah, I think that's safe to say. Um, it's also safe to say that even though a lot of these Confederate monuments and place names are, are gone now, that it's a live issue. Um, mm. and, and, and maybe California will be back in the news before too long. Maybe they get it right this time. <laughs> yeah.